Hello, and welcome back to the Wolf's Den. We are the Order of the Green Hand, here to bring some clarity to A Song of Ice and Fire. So today we are going to be talking about Old Nan, and in true Order of the Green Hand fashion, explaining who we think she really is. So to get things started, we're going to read a passage from A Game of Thrones, Bran 4. She was a very ugly old woman, Bran thought spitefully. Shrunken and wrinkled, almost blind, too weak to climb stairs, with only a few wisps of white hair left to cover a mottled pink scalp. No one really knew how old she was, but his father said that she had been called Old Nan even when he was a boy. She was the oldest person in Winterfell for certain, maybe the oldest person in the Seven Kingdoms. Nan had come to the castle as a wet nurse for a Brandon Stark whose mother died birthing him. He had been an older brother of Lord Rickard, Bran's grandfather, or perhaps a younger brother, or a brother to Lord Rickard's father. Sometimes old Nan told it one way and sometimes another. In all the stories, the little boy died at three of a summer chill, but old Nan stayed on at Winterfell with her own children. She had lost both her sons in the war when King Robert took the throne and her grandson was killed in the walls of Pike during Balon Greyjoy's rebellion. Her daughters had long ago married and moved away and died. All that was left of her own blood was Hodor, the simple-minded giant who worked in the stables. But old Nan just lived on and on, doing her needlework and telling her stories. Old Nan has been in service at Winterfell for a very long time. In fact, Bran recalls his father telling him that old Nan was really old when he was a boy. On several occasions, Nan explains that she came to Winterfell to be a wet nurse for a Brandon. But in each telling of the story, the specifics on which Brandon seem to change. After scouring through the Stark family tree, we determined that the only Brandon she could be referring to is the Brandon born to Lord Willem Stark and Leanne Glover roughly 70 years before the start of the novels. Now, Old Nan's hearth tales have become as much a part of growing up at Winterfell as swims in the hot pools or eating blackberries in the glass gardens. One of the most intriguing aspects of Old Nan's stories is that they seem to be more accurate than most of the other stories we hear throughout the books, which seem to contain only small elements of truth whereas Nan's seem to be strikingly accurate and include details that only someone with first-hand experience or knowledge would possess. All of which has led everyone to believe that Nan is much more than just a storytelling wet nurse. For example, she knows much and more about the Others, the Green Men, the Dungeons at King's Landing, the Wildlings, and the list goes on. Additionally, at the start of Book 2, when the whole world is trying to determine the meaning behind the red comet blazing in the sky, Old Nan, despite being blind, seems to instinctively know that the comet means one thing and one thing only. Dragons. So who is this tiny woman with such vast knowledge, and a grandson who appears to be some sort of giant with superhuman strength? Well, in order for us to answer this question, we will look to the past, and more specifically, to the tales of Dunk and Egg. At the beginning of the books, Bran aspires to become a knight of the Kingsguard, and it would seem that old Nan has told him countless stories about them, and also taught him that the Kingsguard are the finest swords in all the realm. As we all know, Sir Duncan the Tall, Lord Commander of Aegon V's Kingsguard, is regarded as one of the finest knights the Seven Kingdoms has ever known. Before he was a famous Kingsguard, he was Dunk, a hedge knight whose adventures are chronicled in the Dunk and Egg stories. In The Sworn Sword, Part 2 of the trilogy, Dunk swears his sword to Sir Eustace Osgrey, a landed knight whose family had long been the Lords of Coldmoat and the Lord Marshals of the North March, 
until their lands and titles were stripped when one of his forebears spoke out against King Magor the Cruel's opposition to the poor fellows and the warrior's sons. A dispute over water during a terrible drought causes tension between Osgre and Lady Roanne Weber, the current lady of Coldmoat, and Dunk is sent to settle the dispute, where he met old Nan for the first time. It was the girl he had seen earlier at the archery butts. She had a quiver of arrows on one hip and held a longbow that was just as tall as she was, which wasn't very tall. If Dunk was shy an inch of seven feet, the archer was shy an inch of five. He could have spanned her waist with his two hands. Her red hair was bound up in a braid so long it brushed past her thighs. And she had a dimpled chin, a snub nose, and a light spray of freckles across her cheeks. Roanne is also described as having slender arms and eyes that Dunk describes as gray and green and full of mischief. So, if you haven't already guessed it, we believe Old Nan is Lady Roanne Weber. Roanne is small in stature, just like Old Nan, and is described by Dunk as being too small, too clever, and much too dangerous. In fact, Roanne bloodies Dunk's lip, similar to the way Bran recalls Nan giving Hodor a smack whenever he angered her. So, clearly this shows that Roanne is the right size to be old Nan. Being incredibly small to begin with, it is no wonder that she is now practically the size of a dwarf, given that she is over a hundred years old. Furthermore, being likely that her children that she had while she was at Winterfell were Dunk and the Talls, it is very likely that he is the source of Hodor's immense size and strength, since it obviously did not come from Old Nan. Her relationship with Dunk also explains why she seems to know so much, as it is clear that there are no secrets between Dunk and Egg, and since Dunk loved her, it is likely that he would have shared his knowledge with her. It also explains her willingness to stay on at Winterfell, because she could not have a real family with Dunk, because when they parted, he was off to King's Landing to take his Kingsguard oath and could not have a wife and a family. In addition to her physical resemblance and Dunk as a possible source of her information, Roanne Weber's family sigil is a spotted red spider on a white web on a black field. Now, Old Nan is known for weaving her webs in her stories, but also for the click, click, click of her needles. So, in pure George R. R. Martin form, he pays homage to Old Nan, or Rowan's ancestry, in a subtle yet brilliant way, by having Nan constantly weaving with her needles, just like a spider might weave its web. So, at the end of The Sworn Sword, Roanne ends up marrying Sir Eustace, after the two of them bond over the loss of his son, Adam, who Roanne had once been in love with. Eustace, being an older man, eventually dies, leaving Roanne a widow once again. She then marries Gerald Lannister, the lord of Casterly Rock, and together they have four sons. However, Shortly after giving birth to their fourth and youngest son, she vanishes under mysterious circumstances. Coincidentally, this occurs right around the time when Nan showed up at Winterfell to be a wet nurse. It is our belief that Roanne, for whatever reason, decided to leave her marriage and abdicate her role as the Lady of Casterly Rock, so that she may go in search of Duncan. Why would she do this? Well, in The Sworn Sword, Roanne made it clear to Dunk that she wanted to marry him, but the circumstances wouldn't allow it, which indicates that her father's will specified that she must marry someone of noble birth, which Dunk is not. So if Roanne did decide to follow her heart, she would never be able to do so openly, as her lord husband would not take such actions lightly putting both she and Duncan at grave risk. Now, a few times throughout the stories, Dunk and Egg consider the idea of going north to serve at Winterfell, but
but they never actually make it there. Perhaps several years later, the two of them finally did make it up to Winterfell, a fact that Rowan was aware of, prompting her to head north in search of the tall knight who once stole her heart all those years ago. It also doesn't hurt that Winterfell would be an ideal place for Nan to hide, as men from south of the Neck rarely bestir themselves to go that far north. And even if they did, Winterfell is a maze of towers and fortresses, making it easy for Nan to hide from visitors, if she needed to. So in summary, we believe that old Nan is Rowan Weber. Rowan's physical description matches that which would be expected of a younger Nan. Additionally, her disappearance shortly after giving birth lines up with Nan's arrival at Winterfell to be a wet nurse. It seems likely that her feelings for Dunk eventually trumped her duties as a highborn lady, and she decided to disappear in search of Dunk. This would most likely require that she dye her hair, which is strawberry blonde and would stand out in the crowd, similar to the way that Sansa immediately dyes her hair when she disappears to hide her attention-grabbing red hair. Rowan found Dunk, and they had children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren of their own. Hodor being one of them, which makes sense since Hodor is about seven feet tall and strong as an ox, just like Dunk. Dunk and Egg's relationship clearly continued to develop as time went on, so much so that Egg named his firstborn son Duncan, who became known as Duncan the Small. To us, this suggests that whatever Aegon was aware of, be it prophecy or the return of the White Walkers or pretty much anything else, Duncan would also know, and could very well be the source of Old Nan's stories, and the reason that they seem to be more accurate than others we hear throughout the story. And lastly, Duncan and Rowan were clearly in love, which is why she told him more than once that if she were free to do so, she would marry him, and why Dunk refused her gift of a new horse to remember her by, and took instead a kiss in a lock of her hair. Coming up in our next video, we are finally going to discuss Bloodraven. Until then, stay tuned, like, and subscribe for more clarity on A Song of Ice and Fire, brought to you by the Order of the Green Hand.